Hello, welcome to my first video on Scrabble. My name is Peter Schwartzman. I also go by Dr. Earth when it comes to Scrabble uh, or some of my other vices. And Scrabble is a great game of words. I've been playing competitive Scrabble for about 30 years and I've even competed in the National Scrabble Championship a few times. I hope to that later this summer. One of the fun things about Scrabble is the fact that there is a significant luck factor involved. And the luck largely comes by way of these tiles, the blanks. Getting these tiles, even though there's zero score on them, they're worth nothing themselves. They can allow people to play a much higher scoring play. Um, particularly if they are able, if a player is able to play all seven of their tiles on one play, you get a 50 point bonus. And blanks allow that to happen at a much higher frequency than if not. So how do you get the blanks? Well, you draw your tiles out of the bag. But if you draw the tiles you buy in the store out of the bag, you may notice that the ones that have letters on them have indentations. And a very, very uh, sensitive finger can pick that up. And so uh, if you feel around, you might be able to pick the blanks out of the bag, which would be unfair. So in order to alleviate that or eliminate that possibility, uh, pro players or competitive players play with what are called pro tiles. And those tiles, although they have letters or not letters, you cannot feel the letters on them. And so it makes it really lucky to draw the blanks. But what is the probability of drawing those blanks in a particular game? That's what I'm gonna to discuss today. So in a game of Scrabble, typically it's one against one. So there are two people playing. The first player draws seven tiles out of a bag, similar to this. And then they hand the bag over to the other player and they draw seven tiles. So before any words are played, each player gets seven tiles. So what's the probability that the first player gets a blank uh, and what's the probability the second player gets a blank? That's what I'm really going to focus on. So getting the first blank, it, there's a kind of a easy way to solve it and a more complicated way to solve it. Unfortunately, the easy way, the, the harder way to solve is really the intuitive way to solve. So I'm going to discuss that briefly and then I'll give you the easier way to solve. So if you think of each of the seven tiles the first player draws as individual takes, and I'm using the word take to distinguish from draw, there are seven takes. So what is the probability that the first take, the first letter out of the bag, will be a blank? And it turns out it's pretty easy to calculate. There's 100 tiles in the bag. Two of them are blanks. So two out of 100 or 2% of the time, that first tile drawn will be a blank. Well, what about the second tile drawn or taken? That probability depends on the probability of the first one, the outcome of the first tile drawn. So if the first letter is a blank, there's then a less, a slightly lower possibility or lower probability that the second tile be blank. And as you can see, it's there's one tile that's a blank in 99 letters. One out of 99 is a little bit more than 1%. <clears throat> more likely, the first letter is not a blank. So. What's the probability that the second letter will be a blank? It's 2 out of 99, or a little over 2%. But in order to begin answering the question, the overall question is, what is the probability that a blank will be drawn on the first draw? You have to start combining these types of outcomes. So to combine these outcomes, we have A, with capital A here, probability that the first letter is a blank, and the probability that the second letter is a blank. That's one possible outcome, and that's 1 out of 100 times 1 over 99, which is less than 0.01%. Very low probability that you'll draw two blanks in two draws, in two takes. <clears throat> More likely, but still low, is that the first probability is not, uh, first letter is not a blank, and the second letter is, is a blank. And that's 98 out of 100, right, that the first letter is not a blank, multiplied by 2 over 99, or um, when you multiply those two numbers together, you get a little less than 2% for that outcome. Now, there's other outcomes as well. But if you sum those two, you get 1.99%. And that's the probability of the second letter being a blank. That's what it is. Of course, you have to consider other possibilities, where the first or second tiles are not the blank, and the third or fourth or fifth or sixth or seventh tiles are the blank. And you'd have to do that over many, many iterations, and that would take the rest of the today to show you how that's done. But, so for simplicity, 
we're, we're going to do a simpler solution. Fortunately, there's an easier solution, and that is to consider the opposite. What is the probability that none of the tiles taken are blanks? And there are seven tiles taken. So before we move forward, just to keep the shorthand, keep the lettering on the screen as concise as possible, I'm going to refer to the first letter taken as 1T and the second letter taken as 2T and so on. So the probability that none of the first seven tiles are blanks is a probability that the first tile taken, in this case 1T, is not a blank, multiplied by the probability that the second tile is not a blank, and so on and so on, for your seven tiles. And when you put the numbers in, you have the probability of one tile not a blank being 98 over 100. The probability of the second tile is not a blank would be 97 over 99, and so on and so on and so on. And, and when you multiply all these numbers together, it turns out, as you'll see in a couple of cases in this video, uh, and some of the numerators and denominator values cancel. And so you're left with this, a little simpler calculation, which then is, turns out to be 86.4%. So that's the probability that none of the seven, first seven tiles are blanks. So then, of course, 100% minus that would be the probability that at least one of the tiles taken, seven tiles taken, is a blank. And that's 13.6%. And that's a pretty powerful thing to know. If you draw first in a Scrabble game, the probability that you'll have at least one blank is 13.6%. So what about the second draw? Well, obviously, the second draw of seven tiles and depend on the outcomes of the first draw. So we have to think about this as three possibilities. Either the first player drew zero blanks, one blank, or two blanks. And we need to know the probability of all three of these things in order to really make sense uh, the logic involved. But we just figured out the first case, right? The first draw, zero blanks, 86.4. Now, we did also solve the sum of the other two possibilities, whether that they drew one blank or they drew both blanks, and that's 13.6%, right, which is 100 minus 86.4. But, but that, unfortunately, is not good enough. We need to know specific numbers for those two things. And it turns out we can solve that. But let's first look at what I'm really planning. We have three outcomes for the first player, the first seven tiles. They either drew no blanks, one blank, or two blanks. Well, that sets up the out potential outcomes for the second player. They also have um, three outcomes. They can draw zero blanks, one blank, or two blanks, right? But in the case where the first player drew a blank, they don't have three outcomes. They actually only have two outcomes. They can only draw either no blanks or the only blank remaining. And in the last case, if the first player drew both blanks, then the second player doesn't have a chance to draw blanks. So as you can see, we have a roadmap now. We have to determine what the probability of all those different scenarios are. And, and I'm looking at it as, in fact, the central question is, what's the probability that the second player draws at least one blank? That's, we can go further down the road in future videos, but for now, that's our question. Remember, the probability of the first player getting a blank was 13.6%. So we're going to figure out if there's a greater or lower probability of the second player getting a blank. And as you might imagine, it should be a little bit lower, and we'll see how much lower. So the probability of the first player drawing both blanks is... Um, the number of ways to draw both blanks divided by the number of ways to draw seven tiles. So recall, why are we doing that? We're trying to determine um, the, the three probabilities of the first player. We, we know what the probability of no blanks are, but we don't know the specific value of either both blanks or one blank. And if we figure out both blanks, right, then we can determine uh, by subtraction what the probability of one blank would be, only one blank. So let's, let's understand the ways to draw both blanks and the ways to draw seven tiles. I'm going to focus on the seven tiles first. You go into a bag of tiles, there's 100 tiles, and you're going to draw seven of them. And when you see how big this number is, you'll realize why people play Scrabble, because every time you go in the bag and draw seven tiles, you're going to have a unique event occurring. So in order to figure this out, when I draw in a bag, there's 100 tiles. So I draw one, right? And the, pro the pro probability of me drawing this particular tile 
is one out of 100, right? One out of 100. So there's 100 possible uh, ways to draw this tile because there's 100 tiles. And we do that for each of the draws. There's seven draws. So the first opportunity, there's 100 tiles. Second uh, chance, there's 99, and so on and so on. And when you multiply all those numbers out, 199, 98, 77, 96, and I find that four, you get 81 trillion outcomes. That's incredible to think about. So every time you draw tiles in a bag, there's 81 trillion outcomes. Now, of course, there's multiple A's and multiple other letters. And so not every um, seven tiles will look distinct from all other seven tiles. So there's not 81 trillion unique Scrabble outcomes. But from the standpoint of what we're doing, we uh, each tile is unique, and so there are 81 trillion ways of drawing them. Now, that was the denominator. We want to calculate the numerator, and which is the number of ways to draw both blanks. This is a little bit tricky, but let me let me see if I can explain it to you. Um, we first have to figure out how many ways can you draw two blanks within seven tiles, and then we have to fill in the other five. And we're going to multiply those two things together. So the number of ways to draw two blanks uh, is as follows. Let the two blanks be distinct because we're following all of this is order matters. So B1 is the first blank and B2 is the second blank. And then X, in this case, will represent any other letter. So you have several outcomes. The first would be the first take is blank one. The second take is blank two. Third take, fourth take, fifth take, sixth take, seventh take. Of course, there are other letters now that you've drawn both the blanks. A second possibility would be you draw the second blank in the first draw and the first blank in the second draw, and then, of course, the same. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh are other letters. A third outcome would be you can draw you draw some non-blank the first tile, the first blank the second time take, and the second blank the third take, and so on. And you'll see... The question is, how many of these possibilities are there? Well, you really only have to think about where the blanks go. You can, you can figure this out, but it's really a seven permutations of two. And, and that is the notation shown here. Seven factorial, which is seven times six times five times four times three times two times one, divided by two times one. Um, you may not be familiar with this. Uh, this is a fairly straightforward calculation and probability. Uh, what I would recommend in order to kind of see it out, um, think about the first case. The first take is B1, and then the question is B2 could be in in the case, it could be in the second draw, the third draw, the fourth draw, the fifth draw, the sixth draw, the seventh draw, right? There's, so there's six possible outcomes that have B1 as the first take, right? Now, if you switch B1 and B2, and you had B2 as shown in the second um, uh, distinctive way, uh, there are six ways there. And it turns out you can do that seven times. There, there are seven ways to pick one and two such that uh, there's not duplication. So there's 42 possible ways to, to, to put the two blanks in basically seven boxes. That's another way of thinking about it. So that takes care of the number of ways two distinct blanks can be taken. But what about the other five non-blanks? So you can think of that as five um, boxes as well. But now you don't have two distinct tiles. You have 98. And so you can think of the first box. How many possibilities are there to choose from that box? Uh, there's 98. How about the second box? It'd be 97, and so on and so on, right? Because these are the nine blanks. When you multiply all those numbers together, you get 8 billion. But ultimately, to draw the seven tiles with two blanks, uh, you have to multiply the 42 that we just found in the last slide by this 8 billion, and you get 324 billion outcomes. Now, 30 that's a big number. But remember, we're going to be comparing this to the number of ways to draw seven tiles, which we determined to be... Um, a lot larger number. So let's do that. The probability of, this is just a reminder, probability of the first player drawing both blanks is the number of ways to draw both blanks, which we just calculated, divided by the number of ways to draw all seven tiles. And when you do the math, it's 342 billion divided by 80 trillion. 
or 81 trillion and you get 0.42%. So we have just determined is if a person goes in the bag, empty bag, I mean a full bag, draws seven tiles, they have a uh, less than half percent chance of drawing both the blanks. Okay? So now we know the probability of drawing both blanks. We also know the probability of drawing no blanks. So that allows us to, by subtraction, determine that the probability of drawing one blank is as follows. So we compute it this way. It's the 13.6, which is um, at least one blank, and then the 0.42, which is both blanks, which then leaves 13.18, which is rounded to 13.2, is the probability that you draw only one blank. So now we know in detail the probability of the first player drawing blanks. They have three possibilities, right? Now, what about the second player? Well, let's remind ourselves of the first player. These are the three probabilities that we've just calculated. But the second player, um, what's the chances they'll get a blank? Well, it depends on the first player. And we'll use the same logic we did at the beginning, which is to take 100%, meaning uh, the probability, you know, outcomes of the second player, minus the probability that no blank is drawn on the second draw. And then that would be 100% minus that would give us the pr probability that two blanks are drawn. I mean, that the second player draws at least one blank. So the probability that no blank on the second draw, uh, we have to add three scenarios together, right? We have case one, which is the probability no blank was drawn on the first draw, which is case one above, times the probability no blank is drawn on the second draw. We have case two, that there was one blank drawn on the first draw, multiplied by the probability no blank is drawn on the second draw. And the case three is the probability of two blanks drawn on the first draw and the probability that no blank is drawn on the second draw. So now we have these three cases and we have to compute their the values. So case one is the case where two blanks are still in the bag. So the player, uh, the probability that the second player doesn't draw a blank is similar to how we did it for the first player. The eighth tile is not a blank, the ninth tile is not a blank, and so on and so on. And so when you compute that, uh, you have 91 over 93, because there, there are only 93 tiles left in the bag, and all but two of them are not blank. And uh, so it's 91 over 93, and then so on and so on. Uh, you get 85.44% for that outcome. Case two is there is one tile in the bag, because the first player got a blank. Um, so the probability of no blank on the second draw is equal to probability of the eight tile not being blank. In this case, there's 93 tiles left, but all but one of them is not a blank. And so it's 92 over 93 and so on. And when you multiply this out, you get 92.47% is this outcome. Case three is very obvious and simple. There's no tiles in the blank, uh, no blanks in the bag anymore because the first player took both of them. So the probability that the second player will not get a blank is 100%. Well, when you multiply these, these outcomes together, case one is 86.42 times 85.44, which we just calculated. And that total net outcome is 73.8%. The second case is 13.16 multiplied by 92.47, which gives us 12.2%. And then the final outcome rounded to two tenths place is 0.4%. When you add this up, you get 86.4. And you might be saying, hmm, that looks familiar. Because if you subtract that from 100%, you get 13.6%. So what we've concluded from this is that ultimately, there is no difference from drawing first and drawing second. Both players have an equal chance of getting at least one blank on the first draw. 13.6% that will happen. So in conclusion, we find that the probability of drawing at least one blank on the first draw is equivalent to the probability of drawing at least one blank on the second draw. 
They're both 13.6%. And the more likely outcome is that neither player will draw a blank, and they both have a 86.4% chance of not drawing a blank. Now, of course, that's going to change in time as people play. The first player will get uh, the first crack in the bag uh, for, the, for, the, for their their second draw or the overall third draw. And um, you might have heard that the first player has a has an advantage, and it turns out that has been shown to be true. Um, typically, somewhere between the 10 to 20 point advantage is, is given to the first player. And that's at the lowest level of competition to the highest level of competition. And that's not due to drawing the blank first. Um, that's primarily due, it appears, because the first play of a Scrabble game uh, is doubled. Uh, the has to cover the pink square in the middle star, and that's a doubled play. And uh, as well as the first player may often get an extra turn um, because they go first. But it's not due to drawing the blank first. And so with that, I appreciate you coming to watch my production. Uh, this may be the first of many. We'll see how it goes. Uh, please check out my puzzle books at wordnerdbooks.com. Or if you're in Galesburg, per please purchase them at Wordsmith Bookshop. That's the only bookstore in the United States that carries those books. And I look forward to seeing you at the next video. Bye-bye.